Howdy, welcome to the channel. Today, we're starting a new series around the Ryobi 4-volt lithium ecosystem. Let's get started. So the new Ryobi 4-volt lithium ecosystem are these single cell batteries, and they're 4-volt, and you either have a 2-amp hour or a 3-amp hour battery, and they simply charge with the USB-C charging port at the top, and some of them even have a fancy power indicator where you push the button and it shows green if it's charged, or red if it's close to the end of the battery or completely dead. Now all of my four volt kits all came with just over a 20 inch cable. They also come with the two amp hour four volt battery and these are three inches long and about an inch in diameter. So the current tools that I have purchased within the four volt lithium ecosystem is the personal fan, the carving tool, the high-speed rotary tool, a lot of people call it a Dremel. You have the flashlight, and of course, we're going to be talking about their electric screwdriver. So right now, Ryobi has this kit with the recharging cable and the battery, along with the electric screwdriver, for $39.97. Model FVD50. It also includes the 2-inch long number 2 Phillips and flathead bits. So the total weight of the electric screwdriver, battery, and 2 bits is just under 440 grams or about one pound. So as with most everything in life, we need to have a pro list and we need to have a con list. And by the time we're done, these will be able to show us the weight of which one is most important to us and hopefully allow us to make the decision if this is the right purchase for us or not. So the very first pro that we have with this electric screwdriver is it's in the Ryobi ecosystem. So that means that Literally anything that can use the four volt lithium battery, you can use this same battery on those tools as well. So once you start having a plethora of these batteries, it now makes it very quick and easy for you to pop between tool and tool and have multiple batteries to use with those tools. So my next pro that comes with this screwdriver is that it can be done in a pistol grip or by pushing the button on top in a quick swivel, it turns around and now you have a straight electric screwdriver. I actually recently used this to disassemble and reassemble a clothes dryer. So one of my biggest cons with this, I'd even call it a con plus, is that when it over torques, it shuts off for an extended period of time and it does not recover quickly. So I'm gonna drive this three inch screw into a knot in this two by four, which will guarantee to shut off this drill due to an over torque situation. And then I'm gonna pull the trigger multiple times just to show you how long it takes for this to recover from that process. Over torqued. You can see how long it took for that drill to recover from that over torque situation. This actually proved to be a bit of a cumbersome issue to deal with whenever I was reassembling the dryer. It did a great job of disassembly, but whenever I need to reassemble it and it hit some of those screws hard, and I didn't even know because this is either on or off, it torqued them, but then it shut off. And whenever I was trying to go to the next screw real quick, it wasn't ready to go. So my next con with this tool is that it only has storage for one onboard bit. So whenever you have to use another bit, for example, this torque, you can place it in here, but now you're gonna be putting your additional bit just somewhere around, and there's a good chance you may lose it or forget about it, and there goes your bit, and you're gonna to have to buy another one. So I would like to see two onboard bit storage for both of the bits that come with it. However, as a pro on this, we can actually store the shorter quarter inch bits, and we can put two of those because of the system that they've used we can actually put two of those bits within this cradle. So if they simply added another one, that means we could actually store four bits within this tool. So another massive pro with this is the weight of it compared to a more traditional drill like some of these behind me. This is much easier for people who have issues carrying a lot of weight. This will allow most everybody to be able to use this because of how lightweight it is. So one of the pros with this is when you activate it, there's two LEDs which light up your work area so you can actually have it. And as you can see, 
the LEDs actually stay on after you've pressed it, and they stay on for about two and a half seconds. So that's a pro. However, as a con, I actually believe that time is too short. I would like to see the light stay on for between five and 10 seconds long, just so I have that extra light, so I'm not under the counter, continually having to bump this thing to illuminate way up in a weird corner where I'm having to attach a screw. One of the pros with this is how versatile it is. You can throw it in a drawer and whenever you need a screwdriver, you can quickly pull this out and manage most of your jobs in your house with it. No need to go and grab a big drill. However, part of the cons, this is not a job site tool. This is a small home tool. So you're not gonna to wanna to take this to a job site. It's just not gonna have the torque that most job sites are gonna require. So one of the additional pros that this has is that it actually has a status light here at the bottom to let you know if your battery is about to die. If your battery isn't gonna die, it stays green. If your battery is going to die soon or has died, it has turned red. So one of the cons I have with this screwdriver is there is no adjustment with that torque. It's either on or it's off. I would actually like to see a collar on the front to where you can adjust it from low, medium, or high. I would also like to see underneath the low, medium, and high a rough estimate of how much inch pounds it's going to torque the screw down to. We don't need something that's this complex, and that's why I'm saying just something with low, medium, high would be perfect for this small electric screwdriver. As an additional, something I would like to see Ryobi do is for those of us who deal with a lot of small electronics, this actually works really good in this configuration to assemble computers. The problem that I have is the quarter inch bits don't typically fit a lot of computer stuff. Now it's gonna fit your motherboard screws, but there's other screws that it's not going to fit, which is where a system like this comes into place. You have these small little bits that all these different funky little tool heads on them some of these will fit Nintendos because they're the tri-heads, and then you've got different smaller torques. I would like to see a kit that you could purchase with this small screwdriver that had these bits in it and an adapter that would fit into the quarter-inch drive and fit these in it. Then, with the combination low-medium-high head, you then can put it on low and do all of your motherboard screws or all of your hard drive or SSD screws to a low torque and do final minute little adjustments with the actual screwdriver itself. So another thing I would like to see Ryobi do with this is actually sell it in a container so that you can actually have an entire container with bits in it, especially for the people at home who don't have all of the tools that we have here. We simply have this screwdriver and if it came with a bit set, Man, that would be great because put the most common bits in there because a lot of people now use torque in their homes or square bits. And if you had that all in one kit, that would be great. You could throw it in your drawer and it, you knew that that kit had everything in it that you needed. As a pro, this electric screwdriver can go both forward, go in reverse, or you can actually lock it in the middle and use it as a traditional handheld screwdriver. So let's see if this electric screwdriver has enough torque to send this inch and five eighths number eight wood screw into this two by three. So as you can see, it sent it almost all the way in. That's actually really impressive. You can then put it on the middle, which locks it, and you can actually finish by hand the rest of the way into the wood. Now we're gonna do the same thing with a same size screw that has a little bit of lubrication with it. Some people use soap, some people use deodorant, some people use just a little bit of olive oil. Okay, so we got roughly to the same depth. Go ahead and lock it, and we can finish it up by hand the rest of the way. So 
So that's a nice feature that's on this screwdriver. So a lot of homeowners have privacy fences which use these cedar or redwood fence planks. So let's go ahead and see if we could use this to attach one to our fence. Wow, that actually almost fully seated that screw. Just a little bit of finish off, and that's all you'd need. That would be secured. Let's try one more. There we go. So now let's test how far a three inch long screw can go. I don't think it'll go in all the way. Wow, I am impressed. Look at how far that went through. So at that point, you could finish it off by hand. Let's see if that was a fluke. Let's grab another three inch long screw. No, that's no fluke. That's actually pretty impressive considering what you're using here. Now, obviously, I wouldn't recommend driving three inch long screws with this, but it shows you how much torque this electric screwdriver actually has with it. And that's why I said the low, medium, high adjustment on the front could really help this out because if you are trying to attach something that's delicate, that much torque could easily break it. Whereas if you had the low setting, you wouldn't be getting this far into things, which is fine, but you also wouldn't be breaking things whenever you're trying to secure it. So what's the conclusion of the Ryobi 4 volt lithium electric screwdriver? Well, we have a lot of pros and we actually have quite a few cons, but as we look, whoa, whoa, stop, stop the video. Okay. So let me, let me be perfectly clear here. Um, I don't want to make videos that just show Ryobi in a great light because sometimes companies make bad products and as a reviewer, it's up to us to give appropriate recommendations to the viewers. The last thing we want to do is ruin the reputation that we have. And I'm just starting out on this, but that's, that's a key of what I have always done whenever I make recommendations of tools to my friends or family. And unfortunately, with this screwdriver here, we were watching the original video that we were going to release, and we're, we're actually recording this the day before we released the video on YouTube. And the more we watched it, the, the, my wife and I sat down and watched it, my editor watched it, and we were looking at it going, man, there are so many cons. You just saw that huge list of cons that popped up on screen. And... The fact that the drill, the screwdriver kit, shuts off for a really long time actually did prove to be a serious problem for me. The storage, you can kind of deal with that storage issue. That's not that big of a problem. But not having a, some type of torque adjustment or the, the craziness of it just shutting off just ends up becoming a real problem whenever you're actually working on these things. In fact, my editor actually has a much, much less expensive model from Bauer that doesn't do this. He literally can use it continually. Once it hits torque, he can go to the next screw and just continually plows through them, and it doesn't have this problem. So now we have to analyze, would we actually recommend it? At the moment, no, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, that feature, if you want to call it that, I'd call it a bug. That bug is a nuisance. And it's so much of a nuisance that I wouldn't recommend this. Truthfully, you'd be better to buy just a cheap, regular drill from Ryobi and get into the 18 volt ecosystem if you're not already there. That would be better than purchasing this. Now, if Ryobi makes the changes, especially the one with the torque overload and makes it where you can dial in on it, low, medium, high, like I mentioned in the video then I would have no problem recommending it. The, the other features about the LED and the other feature about not having enough bit storage, those are nice to have, but those two other ones are key to making this something that I would recommend. Before that, 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste your money on this at this point. $40 is a lot of money. And $40, especially whenever Ryobi is having their Ryobi days at Home Depot or your local area, man, that, that's, that's a killer deal right there. So save your money. Don't spend $39 on this. Even the one with the additional battery, they have other kits with additional batteries. I would purchase one of those over purchasing this one. So today we're going to be covering the Ryobi Swivel Head Flashlight with Laser Model FVL54. Like with all of the 4 volt Ryobi tools, we simply undo the battery compartment and we slide in the battery and close it back up. But whenever we use it, we press it once and it goes to the brightest setting. That's where it starts. We press it again and it goes to medium. And we press it again and it goes to dim. Now to turn on the laser, we're going to simply long press. To turn off the laser, you have to long press again and the laser kicks off. So this flashlight with battery weighs 238 grams or just over half a pound. So today we're going to be going over our pros and our cons. And hopefully by the end, you'll be able to make the decision if this is something that you want to buy for yourself or not. So let's go over our pros first. This goes up to 625 lumens on the brightest setting, and it has three settings, so bright, medium, and low. And on the lowest settings, it will last to 16 hours on one of the two amp hour batteries. This particular flashlight is IP54 rated for water and dust, which means that you could easily be caught in a shower, rain shower, and it's not going to cause problems for the flashlight. Now, you're not going to be able to use this for diving because it's not rated for any kind of deep water whatsoever. But as far as rains or having it sprinkled with something in the sink, maybe, or sprinkler outside, it's not going to harm the flashlight. So one of my cons with this flashlight is the clip itself. While it is good, it's not able to rotate around. I want this to be able to rotate all the way around so I can decide where it goes. And I also want to be able to take off the clip and have it be able to be put at the top and rotate around the top as well. Most military people know this shape very well. Most military flashlights are shaped this way. If you could put it on the top, then you could easily clip it on your pocket or on the center of your shirt and walk around and use this to illuminate your work. An additional pro with this is it has a laser on it. Now, most of the time when we have lasers, let's face it, we typically use it with the cats so we can you know, play with our cats with it. But it also works whenever you're trying to point out something in the dark. You can easily turn on the laser and actually pinpoint the item that you're trying to show somebody. One additional con that I have with this flashlight is I can't change out the lens color. I would like to be able to pull this lens off and put on a red or a green or a blue and be able to change that out to different colors. Most people who go stargazing know just how important a red light is because it doesn't dilate your pupils. So at least let us have red with this so that we can change out that lens cover and we have that ability. And one of the additional pros with this flashlight is it has a magnetic base to it. So we can simply take this base, come up to something magnetic, throw it on there, and it stays. Then you can swivel your head where you need it, turn the flashlight on, and you now have a lit work area. Another con that I have with this flashlight is that the light is not adjustable. It is simply flood all of the time. I would like to be able to take this and be able to swivel it or pull it out, and it actually concentrates the beam so it's more of a pointed light as opposed to just a flood light. Now, one of the other features with this light, once you've had it on for a while, I purposefully left this on, you can see how bright it is. If you just tap the button one additional time, it turns off the light completely. So you do not have to cycle back down through. It's assuming you're done with the flashlight now and it, you just want to turn it off. And that works for any setting. If you're running it for a while on low, single press and it turns off. Same thing on medium. So you can see our pro list and you can see our con list. And it's pretty easy to tell that the pros far outweigh the cons with this flashlight. So for me, this is a, you should buy it, flashlight. I really like it, it's easy to carry, it's lightweight, and I love the swivel head, and I love that it has three different intensities with it. So I'm glad I purchased this 
with my own money. So today we're gonna to be talking about the Ryobi 4 volt lithium personal clip fan model FVF51. So this kit is currently going for $39.97 at homedepot.com. Now Ryobi says that this fan has up to seven hour runtime with it on low and on high it will put out up to 135 CFM. So the fan with battery weighs 348 grams or just over three quarters of a pound. So today we're gonna to look at the pros and we're gonna look at the cons of this personal clamp fan and how it does. So one of the big pros about this is the portability. This thing is so small. Look at how small it is. It's so easy to carry around. This, you could easily throw this in a backpack or a large purse. And it also has a clip. So you'd be able to clip this on anything and it has a nice rubber footprint on this. So you'd be able to clip it on the side of a table, for example, and you can even move it whenever it's on the side of the table and it stays on. You can also clamp this onto poles, other such type items. So this system would actually work really good for parents with little ones because little ones typically have a difficult time controlling their body temperature. You could take this and point it at the body of the little one and turn it on when they're in a stroller and you're out in the park or you decided to go to the amusement park and you didn't realize it was going to be 100 degrees, you had something like this, you could blow it across the baby and keep them cool whenever they're in their stroller. Along those same lines, this would actually work really good for the elderly because you could have this and they could have a personal fan blowing to them. With a seven hour battery life on low, that would give them seven hours of cooling that they have. And if you needed to run it on high, well, it's simple. You buy one, you buy some more batteries, or some more batteries, or some more batteries. And you could easily throw all these batteries. They don't take up much space at all. You could throw those into a bag. You could throw it into your pocket of your wheelchair. And whenever you needed one, you'd simply swap out the dead battery, put in the new battery, and you still have more power for your fan. So the only con that I've found with this system so far is how hard it is to push the clip. Now for me, that's not difficult at all. I can easily do that. I can do that with two fingers. That's, that's not a big deal for me. However, since I mentioned the elderly with this, the elderly would actually have a difficult time to open this because of how much force it actually takes. So as you can see, this is a metal spring system that is in here. What I would like to see Ryobi do on a further iteration of this is make it where this is an adjustable dampener over here. You put it in position and you can actually tighten it. That way you don't have to sit here and as an elderly or a young child try to open this up, you have an adjuster over here. So once you get it into position, you lock it and it simply stays on whatever object you put it on. As an additional pro, this fan also has very localized movement with it. So if you have somebody who's sensitive to having a lot of air blown in their face, then it's not going to hit them. And someone who needs the air, you can put it directly in front of them and it can blow across them. So to operate the personal clip fan, we simply untwist the side where the battery goes. We slide in our battery and put the cap back on. And on the back of the unit, we have a push button. So the first push puts it on high and there's high and then we can put it on low. So again, on high, you're gonna get up to 135 CFM. It lasted about two and a half hours when I used it on the high setting. But on low, you're gonna get lower CFM, but you're gonna get a lot longer battery life, up to seven hours with one of these two amp hour batteries. So would I recommend buying the Ryobi personal clip fan? Yes, because if we look at our cons, there's only one and it's the strength of the clip. And as long as that's not an issue for you, then that's not even a con. Everything else is literally all pros. So for me, it was a no brainer. It's great, I love it, especially in the heat here in Texas. I can just simply turn that and have it facing to me and I can have a continual breeze going and keep me cool even whenever it's 110 outside. So I purchased this as the pumpkin carving kit and you can see there's the two tools, but also a lot of accessories that come with this. And they still have this kit currently for sale for $99.97 at homedepot.com. So if you would like to buy the rotary tool by itself, it is currently for $59.97. Model FVM51. So I'm going to break this up into two different videos. First, I'm going to be talking about the high-speed rotary tool. 
And next we're gonna talk about the carving tool. So the high speed rotary tool weighs 290 grams, which is about 0.6 pounds in total weight. So today we're gonna to be going over our pros and our cons, and hopefully by the end, you'll be able to make the decision if this is something that you wanna buy for yourself or not. So to use this tool, we simply open up the base, slide in our battery, close it up. Then we're going to pick one of our accessories. So for me, I'm gonna use one of the grinding heads, slide it into the end. We hold down on our piece and we just tighten down the end. And there we go. And now we're ready to use the high speed rotary grinder. Some of the features that it comes with is it has an adjuster here. So this adjuster allows this high speed rotary tool to go from 5,000 up to 25,000 RPMs. If you get into a situation where it's stuck and it won't let it come out, in my case, I'm able to. But if you get it stuck, we simply hold onto the bottom of the collar here with our, screw, with our uh, wrench and unscrew the top because this has a very fancy collar on it. So this collar has a double action on it. First of all, you can tighten it as tight as you want to onto the head here, but the actual tightening action of the collar on here typically is going to be from this bottom point. Now, if you're gentle with it whenever you attach it and you're not doing something that's too heavy, you can simply twist this collar and it will tighten down. But having this double lock collar is important to understand that it's there because that's what's actually torquing down onto the shaft. So if you ever get your bit stuck in here and it won't go in or it won't come out, you simply undo that collar, slide the bit in, and you tighten that collar down, which holds the bit. So if you ever have your bit stuck, this is what you need to loosen up in order to let that bit slide out. So we're gonna be using this high-speed rotary tool today to make this jagged edge smooth. So one is the lowest speed, so whenever we turn it on, that's gonna be slow. And then five is gonna be high speed. So with just a little bit of quick work here, you can see now how smooth we've made it with this tool. And you heard it didn't bog down any, and we have a nice smooth edge that's on there. So now we don't have to worry about getting jagged edges like this cutting into us, nice and smooth. So you can actually do a lot with high-speed rotary tools. As you can see, we can actually take burrs off edges of metal. You can actually take wire wheels, and you can uh, pull paint off with them. You can um, buff areas that are rough and make them smoother. They actually also include some sanding discs, so you can actually sand things smoother. You can get different grits of those. They have several different die grinders that come with it for different grinding heads. And then of course, you also have the polishing wheels, which use this little connector here, and you simply screw it into the polishing wheel, and then you take polish, such as this one, and you rub it on the wheel and you're able to take, for example, you might have some cheap rusted stainless steel. Well, this will actually allow you to take the rust off and bring back that luster. You could also do this with aluminum to bring back that luster. So the nice thing about Ryobi high speed rotary kit is you can actually use things like this Dremel flex shaft. So to do that, we're going to simply pull off the quick connect collar, set it aside, then we're going to take our standard Dremel style collar and put it on. Then we're going to undo the front of the shaft. This is specifically designed to pull off the front of the tool. We're going to set it aside. Then we take our flex shaft and we push it into it and tighten it down. And then we take the tool and screw it into the flex shaft. So now that we have the collar attached, we simply turn it on. And you can see in here that our high speed flex shaft is now spinning. So this allows you to put the tool down somewhere. And if you have just a tiny little opening to get into, you can put this wand in those little holes. So who is this tool designed for? 
This tool is designed for the average home repair person and small craftsman who just needs it every now and then. If you're using a high-speed rotary tool on a regular basis, I would actually go ahead and invest in something a little bit beefier than this. But as far as small home hobbies and uh, small home repair, this is great. This is so easy and it fits any Dremel size tool on the end of it, as we've shown in this video. So what are our cons for this? Well, first of all, if you start it with too much pressure on the end, for example, if you have a flex shaft and you have it bent just slightly too hard, it doesn't have enough torque to start it and it'll start flashing lights at you. The other con is it doesn't go as fast as a traditional plug in the wall Dremel will. Now this will absolutely keep pace with any battery powered Dremel, but it's not going to be as fast as one that you plug into the outlet. So we look at our pros, we see how many features this thing has on it and how nice this is. And then we look at our cons and there's really not that many, there's a couple of them. So if you're in the market for a battery powered high speed rotary tool, and especially if you're already in the four volt ecosystem, this is no brainer, you need to go get something like this. But if you're just a hobbyist and you don't have any in the four volt, I'd still recommend it because it does such a great job. It can be so precise with the work that it is doing and it's light and easy to transport and just works every single time you put a battery in it. So this tool is currently being sold for $69 for the battery, the tool, the wrench, and a V gouge, U gouge, and a flat gouge. So this carver has a one millimeter strike length and does 14,000 strikes per minute. So the Ryobi 4 volt lithium carver model FVH51 weighs 352 grams or just over three quarters of a pound. So there really isn't a whole lot of features with this. You open it up, slide in the battery, and there's an on and an off switch. You do have a, an, a light indicator like all of the other tools so far that lets you know if it's charged or if it's near or dead on the battery. And other than that, that's pretty much the features of it. So to put in a bit, you simply open the collar, we grab a bit and we put it into the system, twist it down, and then we tighten the collar with the provided wrench and we're good to go. Now this system's not gonna be good at carving less dense items. For example, you're not gonna be able to easily carve foam with it or cardboard, etc. This is for something like wood or um, fruits or vegetables like pumpkins and gourds and things like that. But now that we got the bit on, we'll turn it on and you'll see, I'm just gonna apply some pressure. Now initially you don't have anything. You actually have to push it hard enough to hear those clicks. Those clicks are normal. Now, I'm not an artist. But an artist who's actually able to make things out of wood, for example, feathers, you're trying to make a feather. then this tool would allow you to do those types of carvings within that wood and give you very gentle feather looks. Now obviously, as you can tell, you're not gonna be able to dig, dig deep down in here. But that's not the goal of this tool. This tool is for very fine carving detail. So you can see I can vary the depth. And I can consistently hold that depth as I'm moving through my piece. Then if we need to get a wider trough, we simply pull off this bit and swap on the next size bit. And you can see the difference in these two. This is the one I was using and you can see the new one that I'm putting on there.
So even though I'm gouging out more, you hear the tool, the tool is still holding up fine. And you see how consistent my depth is on that going all the way through. Now somebody who's skilled at carving will be able to do a much better job than I am. I am not a skilled carver, but you can see how you can get those small intricate details. If you're trying to match some cornice or something in your home that has very intricate detail, especially those who have homes from the 1800s, this would actually work really good to get you those fine details that you're looking for. So would I recommend you purchase this tool if you do wood carving or you need to do intricate detail in wood or a similar material? Then it does a great job. I have no problems with it. If you do like pumpkin carving, this actually does a really good job of doing those intricate details with some of those see-through pumpkins. You're not just trying to cut the straight old eyes in it. You're actually trying to bring out the pumpkin and do the real fancy drawings like the ones you see here. That would actually be really good. Thank you for watching our Ryobi 4 volt lithium ecosystem review for the tools that we've gone over. If you have any questions or comment about these tools, be sure to leave them below and I will try to include comments within the videos like this one. Thanks for watching.